So, uh, well, thank you very much for being here and thanks to Lynx for inviting me. Um, what we'll talk today uh, is about blockchain. I'll talk about blockchain and how to formalize with game theory uh, the analysis of risk within blockchain. So, uh, this, and now I, I, I'm Paolo Zappala. I'm, I'm, and I just started a PhD in, in Orange uh, together with the University of Avignon. And uh, um, this work uh, actually is not what I'm doing now in Orange, but uh, um, it's what we did uh, in Lipsis in Sorbonne, uh, together with the Professor Maria Potoputocaro and uh, Dr. Maria, uh, Mariana Belotti, Professor Stefano Secchi. Uh, yeah, I forgot to, to write them, but they are my, my co authors in, in our works. Um, so, what I will do today, I will start by. Sorry, a second. Uh, okay. Um, so I'll do a brief introduction about blockchain, and then I will uh, deal with uh, the uh, notion of game theory and the model that we develop in, within game theory, and how we apply it to some of the application, uh, some of the application of some uh, specific blockchain protocol. So first of all, the question we, we want to uh, ask, want to answer, is. Uh, uh, is there a way to uh, detect the risks of uh, using blockchain, you know, uh, using specific blockchain? And uh, if so, uh, how can we formalize this analysis so that we can understand all the risks? Where, where are they? And uh, how, uh, if we can find like a threshold uh, uh, to, to the maximum number of risks that we can deal with. And finally, if we can uh, provide, uh, instead of uh, a list of risks, uh, some, some indices to understand uh, which are the the, the, the uh, I would say which are the, the, the value of the risks that we can evaluate in some some way. So let's start with the basic question: What is blockchain? Uh, blockchain is a technology that allows us to uh, um, uh, to uh, have um, a database in a, in a decentralized manner. That is, that uh, there is not a central uh, uh, central user that have all the the, the the database, but uh, that is shared within all the other users. Um, so uh, the, of course, in order to have an agreement on what is part of the uh, the, the ledger or not, uh, we uh, the, the, the the ledger is split into blocks. So every block contains some transactions, and uh, when a new block and transaction is added, uh, there's a way to agree, which is the next, so that everyone can um, can update their own ledger and have a copy themselves. So that's briefly how blockchain technology works, uh, but um, it was first used 12 years ago within Bitcoin, uh, but then uh, in, the next, in the last decade, we had some different applications. So for instance, uh, uh, swaps, that is uh, we, are, we are exchanging uh, assets onto different blockchains. So there's a way protocol to, to manage this, uh, uh, this exchange. And, or for instance, uh, um, you can also travel off chain. That is that you, you don't use the main chain, but you're using um, uh, different and different path, different uh, protocols that don't deal with the, that are based on the main blockchain, on main chain, but actually uh, they are developed outside of the main chain. And uh, what we want to understand is all of these uh, protocols, are they safe or what are the risks? So in the literature, we have that, um, in the typical approach to identify some attacks is to uh, imagine that some, play some players are following a protocol that is uh, necessary to uh, perform a task. And uh, uh, then there are some other players, they are deviating in some way. Why are they doing that? Because maybe they are getting some uh, improvement in, the, in, their, in, their, in their utility function. In a, and so they have an incentive. In order to prove that this is worth it, so that is what we call that an attack is worth it, um, we create a model and uh, we prove that uh, these deviations, that the situation in which some players are deviating, is uh, uh, an equilibrium, that is a solution of the game. Um, let's go a bit on details on the technical part. So we consider a game uh, in, the, uh, in the normal for representation, which is uh, the easiest one to, to deal with, in which we have a set of players, possibly finite set of players, and each set of player, each, each player has a set of strategies within uh, within choose uh, she can choose. Um, so, for instance, let's say uh, the one uh, an easy game, rock scissors and paper. 
uh, we have two players, and uh, uh, I as a player have a, a set of strategies that is uh, that is three elements: this rock, scissor, and and, uh, and paper. Um, so uh, we have I want a set of strategy, and we imagine that one can pick uh, a single strategy. This is in, in the easiest part. Uh, so, for instance, I, I take rock uh, and uh, you take uh, paper, for instance. And uh, so we have to give a value of the situation in which we have chosen uh, a strategy and we give a value. This value is called the utility function. So utility function in the situation in which I find I choose rock, you choose paper, uh, is, for instance, to me is minus one because I, I lose and to you is one. So how we formalize it is a utility function that maps all the set of strategy, a joint strategies that is strategy chosen by each of us to a vector of utilities. So in this case, it's minus one, one. Um, so this is how a game is uh, defined. And uh, uh, the most common definition of, Nash equilib uh, of equilibrium is the one of, of Nash. That is, is an, an, a situation, a, a, strategy, um, a joint strategy in which no one has an, an incentive in uh, uh, deviating unilaterally. So, uh, for instance, uh, the, the, the situation in which I choose rock and choose paper is not an equilibrium because if you choose paper, it's, it's uh, good for me to choose a scissors, for instance. So this is not an equilibrium. And uh, um, of course, this is the easiest definition with two strategy. Actually, it's more complicated than that. We have mixed strategies, uh, but I'm not dealing with it um, for the moment. Um, so we imagine that we have uh, some players that have uh, different options. One is uh, uh, the green one is uh, the uh, living one is the, the, um, the strategy recommended by protocol and uh, that we have some other major strategies. so ideally we want that this is the situation the scenario we should get everyone is following the protocol but actually it can happen that sometimes uh some players are deviating in some way and this is uh, can be convenient to them because it's an equilibrium to them what does it mean an, an equilibrium is that if some someone is changing uh, unilaterally, their, uh, her utility is changing, is, 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 is changing, is, is lowering, or anyway, is not increasing. So this is, in theory, how an attack is dealt within game theory in the in the literature. Um, but we want to extend the, so we can list some risks and say, okay, this this attack uh, is an Ash equilibrium, and we have a list of risks for every blockchain. But to me, if I want to deploy a block the blockchain within uh, some certain um, a certain field. I want to understand which are the full risk. I want to be sure about the full risk and then some indices that provide me uh, feedback to understand if I should use it or not. So imagine that we have some players that uh, uh, yes, a, a number, a finite number of players, and they have to apply this protocol, some random protocols. Um, how can we model this? So a protocol in this case, let's, let's say that it's a, a sequential protocol. So, for instance, we have player C that is doing performing an action, and then player A that is performing an action. We can make um, a list of actions in seconds, and uh, uh, we can uh, find uh, create these uh, uh, these um, these three. Let's, let's say that's that sequence of actions. Um, what, uh, in our model, we have the one the protocol. We consider not only the, the action provided by the protocol, but all the possible action available to players at, the, at every single moment. So, uh, for instance, in this case, this is a protocol from the Latin network, uh, this uh, one from Bitcoin. Uh, these are all the possible actions available to the players. So this is a diagram. So it's, it's C, for instance, can follow the protocol at the first step and go right, or not follow the protocol and, and go left, and we have an outcome. So this is, uh, for now, this is a representation of just what is happening. We want to formalize that. In order to formalize that, uh, this, uh, we call it a game three. Uh, so in which every node, everyone, can, there's a player who can make a decision. And the formalization of game three is, uh, uh, it's easy to understand, but it's quite complex to, to write down. And uh, the, the very important point is that every, at the end of the game, we have to give a value to, uh, to the outcome that we get, that we get. So for instance, in this case, we choose within our model to give a threshold that is zero. This is the value that we have if we, the protocol didn't exist to the initial state. So for instance, let's say the C at the beginning does nothing, uh, the protocol can't start, so everyone is receiving zero. The vector zero, zero, zero means that um, every uh, the first player receives zero, the second player receives zero, and so on and so forth. Um, if everyone is following the protocol, okay, so 
if, if we get to the end, everyone who follows the protocol, we get a positive outcome. So uh, then this case is fixed to one. And so, uh, just to yeah. remind me, what are the roles of A, B, and C in this case? Wait, what are they? Uh, what are the role played by A, B, and C? Like, uh, uh, in this case, it's a, the, the, it's a specific protocol. Uh, like, uh, yeah. they, have, they have three players, three players. Uh, and they are, uh, this is the case of the routing in, within the Lightning Network. I just took an example. But they act like a broker here? Um, and, uh, no, the, in this case, we have ABC are free, that are um, free players, free users. They are, have to make a transaction A to B and B to C. Okay. And to make a transaction, there's a protocol that says C creates a, a, an ash and then sends to A, A to B, and then B to C. Okay. In order to model this protocol, uh, this is the, the how, how, how it works on, on the line. Okay. Um, yeah, this was... So A gets something to B, but gets something to C, and uh, B gets something a uh, reward return. Uh, yes, actually. And the last case is uh, when B did his job, but he then he didn't get the reward. Actually, yeah, yeah, this one, yeah. At the end, B, if if B doesn't give something to to, to C, uh, has done already something to A, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, but she she she's not receiving something so for C, so it's uh, yeah, so it's, it's she still some asset, so we say this is minus one. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a case just to, uh, this is a simple case, uh, and um, what the, the, the key point is that if within our model, we set to zero, okay, nothing is happening, and uh, above uh, some something above zero, if, if it's uh, something that we get to a better, uh, better asset, or minus one, it loses something on the way. Um, do you have any other questions? Also, also on Zoom, to the moment, feel free. To interrupt because I, I get bored talking. Listen to my voice. What is HTLC and H? What do, do they stand for? Uh, yeah, in this case, uh, this specific case is uh, uh, HLC is a protocol that allows to uh, make uh, um, to, to 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 create an hash uh, so that if if uh, the point is one player is creating um, an R that is uh, that is uh, um, a string and uh, then hash it. And provides uh, uh, that actually becomes h provides this uh, uh, value h to uh, to within within the contract. So in saying that the contract is activated only if the private key, let's say this r, is revealed. So I will, I will speak. I will explain it briefly. So if c c is creating the the the, the, the hash r and uh, and publishing uh, and publishing with the value of h. So if someone provides r, then the contract is activated. Uh, a and B created the two uh, HLC, uh, this hash, hash time lock contract, uh, that are contracts that are fixed, uh, that, that they can be activated only if the value R is revealed. Then C, uh, C when, when she, uh, C receives the, the hash time lock contract, uh, uh, she reveals R, and then uh, B receives the value of R and reveals it to A, so that uh, the, all the two transactions can be activated. And this is the, 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 the order in which uh, everything, everything is done. Um, and wh where is all the algorithmic parts of the uh, blockchain that uh, uh, for the puzzle, for the for, for the energy costs, where, where does the energy costs come here? Um, so in this case, uh, we have to accept some uh, hypothesis, uh, like for instance, like uh, more than an energy cost, the problem is that if, if a, a, a transaction is not published on time, so we analyze separately uh, when uh, if the transaction can be published because if this transaction can be published or if someone cannot reveal the private key on time, uh, the key, uh, she cannot activate the the um, the, um, the contract. And uh, so in this case, uh, uh, this part is analyzed separately because uh, we decompose. Uh, it does not depend on on, on this protocol. It depends on on a different. Uh, uh, level like the main, the main chain, it is analyzed separately. Okay, so the proof of work is on the Nover uh, game. In other game, yes. Okay. But since it's qu quite independent, it's independent. Uh, we can create. Uh, I will talk it about later. Uh, we can create. Uh, um, uh, say we're playing two two different games, uh, like playing chess on two different uh, boards, uh, and then we analyze analyze them separately, and then we put, we put get the results and put them together. So in this case, we don't we don't. It's not being ignored, but we analyze separately the, the proof of work part and the, the main chain. But the utility doesn't. Uh, how can you separate the utility from the operation of the 
protocol of, uh, uh, of there is a competition between players in blockchain uh, on who succeeds first to resolve a problem the that is called the puzzle yes and and it is very very energy consuming so he, uh, if you ignore it, this this energy or this cost then you don't get the correct utility because this is what costs the most but here here the cost like uh, uh, publishing like there's very very little cost also ashing uh just a string is the little cost uh if we consider like within this protocol there is a very very little energy cost the problem is that in the main chain where where the most of, of the cost is done um i, I don't understand which point the, the energy cost is uh, is is important uh, within the, the analysis uh, so is reveal it or not reveal an action so do you decide whether you reveal or not uh, uh, i don't say like like if we perform the action from the protocol like uh, if uh i don't, don't say what what, what means would reveal an action um, sorry so, so what the actions available are R or HTLC. These are the two actions available. Uh, okay, no. At this point, I freeze on the first node. CS two action like uh, finding H or doing nothing. These are the two actions available to the player. And uh, at the fourth point, fourth node, for instance, CS two action like revealing R or doing nothing. Um, that th these are the actions. So every node, uh, if we uh, the two, the two uh, direction that you can take. These are the action. For instance, A has just two action to perform. B has uh, two action, the third node, and two action, the fifth, fifth node. And uh, uh, we consider like these are all the possible alternatives available to to uh, to the players at that very moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, I hope maybe uh, la later can be more involved. This was actually an example. Of, uh, I didn't go into detail to this. The, the very key point is like how to va give value to the utilities, and that is should be positive, negative, or equal to zero upon uh, respect to the initial point. It's very, very um, like it's as simple as idea, but it's useful later. Um, I go ahead if maybe uh, after that, if you have any question, uh, uh, more question on this, we can discuss it uh, separately. Uh, so yeah, this is the point. Like uh, how we, which value we give to the utility functions, and uh, uh, so we like taking all the game tree is quite complex and with very easy condition. Every game tree can be reduced to a, a game normal for, normal representation, and uh, this is quite all like uh, always true. Like, we have very easy conditions, and so we have that uh, we have a game with all the possible alternatives available to the players. And the specific specific strategy that is uh, the one given by the protocol, and the protocol is represented by these uh, strategy uh, profiles, joint strategies uh, that we that we write it at sigma. So we have a game with a specific joint strategy belonging to the game, and we call it as defined in the return a mechanism. So the question is not more uh, now that we have a modelization how to to, to write that down the model the the, the protocol. We would like to understand how can we which we property assign to this uh, uh, mechanism. So if we give some properties, then we can get, give some information about the protocol. And uh, in order to do that, we don't consider like we, with this before like all the tax, but uh, we start from the bar model. That is that we distinguish that we divide the players in three categories. Three categories. Uh, there are the altruistic players that. Uh, Always follow the protocol, no matter what. So we are sure they are following the protocol. The protocol. Then we have rational players that uh, want to maximize uh, their own interest. So they are. Um, they maybe they maybe they follow the protocol because it's convenient, but maybe they are deviating uh, in some way. And we see how. Uh, and finally, there's the Byzantine players, and in this case, we consider as Byzantine every players that deviate in, in, arbit in arbitrary way, so it can play any possible strategy. Um, the, uh, the the indices that we want to provide to uh, analyze the, the, the any, any single mechanism is the 
a maximal number of rational and buzzing players that can accept within a uh, system so that uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the result for altruistic players is always the same. How do we formalize that? Uh, in, uh, we have uh, a notion known in literature is the one of um, resiliency. Uh, so if we have a certain number of rational players, let's say a K number of rational players, we want that uh, if they coordinate in some way, these K players, uh, uh, they find it convenient to uh, to uh, play also play the to play the, uh, sorry to follow the protocol rather than not following the protocol. So what does it mean in technology? It's not that we want them to exclude um, uh, a unilateral deviations. But we want that any possible deviation of K players uh, should be excluded because it's not working to them to do that. And this is the formalization definition. So we have that utility of using the strategies is greater than fixing all the others that they are still from the protocol. These K players are doing any other possible strategies. Um, this is for the rational players. And with respect to Byzantine players, we want that uh, the, the altruistic players don't get uh, a lower utility larger than one expected from the protocol. Uh, sorry, um, uh, same mistake. We have a notion in, in, in the territory of immunity, that is that uh, the, if some are deviating, the other are not uh, uh, getting something lower than the protocol, but this notion is very strict because, for instance, in the game we saw before, uh, like if someone is deviating, the, the, the exchange is not, not happening, that is lower than gets to the final place. So we want that uh, we give a different definition, which is simple, but is very effective in analysis of weak immunity. That is that if we have T players that are biasing, so they're pretty, not randomly, but in a, in, a, in a different way, no matter which way, we have that uh, the, the altruistic players get at least zero. That is, they get at least the initial state. Um, these two definitions are quite, quite the, the, it's new, the one with community, uh, the K reason is, is given already in literature. We start from these two indices, K and T, to understand, to uh, assign a, um, uh, these indices to every mechanism, so to give a value uh, to every protocol and to, to, to prove them. Um, what we did next is to analyze different protocols and assign this value to every single protocol. Do you have questions until now about the modeled idea uh, from attacks to creating two indices K and T? Um, okay, so if you don't have any questions, okay, I will start and we'll analyze one by one every single protocol. Okay, I'm kidding. No, we will start, so we analyze, we can analyze all of them all, but we start, for instance, from Bitcoin. We will talk about Bitcoin. Um, so in Bitcoin, we have that the result is that uh, is not immune to any possible uh, uh, subset of Byzantine players, but is uh, immune to uh, let's say 15% of uh, uh, resilient, um, resilient rational players. So the res res resiliency is up to a 15% of the players. How we can we calculated it? So first of all, how does the Bitcoin protocol works? Um, in, in a certain way, it's like uh, uh, we have to find a way uh, to, 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 to say that a block is valid. And the, the, the mechanics that is behind Bitcoin is called proof of work. That uh, using a, a, a metaphor is like you know, playing the lottery. So we, like, we are 10 here in, in the room. So uh, everyone is given a ticket of the lottery. And uh, every, for every block, uh, we have the chance everyone to, to win the lottery. The one who wins can publish uh, um, can publish the block and add it to the list. So, um, if why why this is a, um, a good a good method? Because if, for instance, I say I'm 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 very uh, no, I'm not yeah I want to to destroy the chain instead of adding the no, the, the the block to the end of the chain, I'm creating a fork. That is, I'm creating uh, I'm going back to another block and create a deviation. And uh, if I want to do that, I'm on my own. I can get to create the, I will create a very short chain because I have only 10% of the possibility to, uh, to, to create a shorter chain. And the other one we create eventually because they're following the protocol, they, they are creating the longer chain. So in, in blockchain, we say that, in blockchain Bitcoin, we say that the, the main, the longer chain is the one to be followed because it's the more, the, the most safe and most difficult to be attacked. Um, so, I'm sorry, spoiler. Um, so, is uh, uh, when we have uh, 
now there are 600,000 blocks that, that are mined, that is a technical term, that have been mined. Um, uh, how, when can, be sure, can we be sure that a, a block is valid? Like it's impossible to revert the transaction with the block, that is that we're creating a fork behind the block and, uh, and create a longer chain than the one we have. Uh, we say for, for um, best practice uh, that the number is uh, of blocks that we have to, to have in front of the one that we, we, are, we, 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 we consider valid is a six. So this is changes now that we consider also doing seven or others, but let's say that is six. So at this point, uh, it's quite impossible, not quite impossible, it's very difficult for one to revert this transaction. So because you have to create a longer chain. But here we have to see like what is impossible to, to measure how, how impossible is it actually. So let's imagine that I'm, I'm the, the bad guy and I want to, um, as the player, I want to create a longer chain starting from behind the block that is valid. So in secret, I'm creating a shorter chain uh, in order to uh, overtake the longer chain and publish them as soon as we have longer chain. So what I can do is to create this longer chain, uh, this, this shorter chain, make it longer. And as soon as I overtake the others, publish it. And uh, as soon as I publish it, mine is the longer chain. So uh, the one that is con was considered valid actually does not belong to the longer chain anymore. So it is considered invalid. And uh, this is an attack. It's, it's a very important attack because um, if I do so, uh, let, let's imagine I'm, I have a transaction within that the, was validated. And uh, I'll, I'll make an example. I, I'm buying from you, I'm buying a car, and uh, I, I give you five Bitcoins. So I publish uh, uh, the transaction with five Bitcoin given to you. You give me the car. And then I say, look, it's six blocks, so it's validated. I, get, I paid you, uh, this is good. And then I make this attack and revert the transaction and, and, and make, it in, uh, uh, make this transaction belonging to the shorter chain. So my payment is not valid anymore. And I get the car and I get also the money I can spend it in another way. This is an attack, uh, it's called double spending. So the, this, the money I was spending, I actually spend it in a different way uh, in, uh, to another to a third part. And uh, we want to prevent that. Uh, so the basic, uh, now, now let's go a little bit more technical. Um, what we say about the, the, the lottery, uh, like I have a ticket and a 10% of, of chance of, of winning the lottery. In this case, in this case we, we, we fix it value that is alpha case for every miner, every, uh, every miner is everyone who's joining the lottery, have uh, um, a percentage of probability to win the lottery. It is proportional to her computational power. And uh, so for instance, alpha, my, my alpha is 10% um, in, in the example that we have. And um, we imagine the worst case scenario in which we have uh, in the modelization, make it simple. We have uh, a player, there's a bad guy uh, with I, who has computational power alpha I, and the other players with J, who are too altruistic and following the protocol, so always publish on the main chain. So the protocol asks the minds to like, uh, uh, Publish always on the main chain and publish it immediately, like not keep it for, for themselves. But I'm the the, the, uh, the, the the bad guy. Sorry, I'm using this term is not correct, but like an alternative. And um, I want to, uh, I can do, I can publish whenever I want and wherever I want. So we, we will see later how we model, model it. Um, so let's say that I'm, I'm, I'm very crazy. So I, I use all the money possible to revert the transaction because I don't want to pay you the value of the car. So if I'm buying, I'm using all the computational power in the world to revert this uh, uh, computational power. I'm using my computational power to make my chain the longest. So I have a very, very tiny chance to do that because if I have 10%, it's very rare that I get to, 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 to revert this transaction, but still there's a low, post, uh, low probability that this is happening. So for, that's why the immunity for Byzantine players uh, is, is, uh, is zero because anyone can, in theory, uh, get the probability to revert an attack. Uh, of course, this is a limit. So we are wanting to send, is, if it's not, it's possible, but is it worth it to do, to do so? So for a point of view, the rational player, does it make sense to revert the transaction? And uh, the idea is that, OK, we have a block on transaction. I'm a rational player. I not not only totally, uh, not only totally bought a car, but did something else, and uh, I published some transaction in a block, and I want to revert it. So we fix to m the number of uh, uh, transaction that I'm doing in this block. That usually in a block has a 10,000 bitcoins that are exchanged. So we, we can find a limit to to the value of a block of the number of transaction. 
I want to revert them. And to revert them, I have to lose. There's a risk of losing some, some, some blocks because I, I'm, I'm risking. And the point is, whenever someone publishes a block, gets a reward. So now the reward for publishing a block, uh, block is uh, uh, 6 bit and 25. So let's say, for instance, that my effort, I'm losing 100 blocks in, in, in the effort. So I'm losing 625 bitcoins. That is a lot. But in order to revert uh, the, the, the uh, single block. But when I revert it, uh, in, in, within the block I was reverting, uh, I was spending 1,000 blocks. So to me, it's worth it to, to revert this block because I'm, I'm losing some, but another way I can double spend the, the, the value. So formally, we have give some value and an R to, to the reward and, and, and the transaction. Uh, point is, how many blocks do I have to, do I have to uh, use in order to, uh, do I have to, to, to waste in order to revert an attack? And uh, uh, we have to, in order to do that, we have to compute what is the optimal strategy and then to see, to, to compute which, which is the maximum number of, uh, the average number of blocks that are starting from zero uh, that makes me perform an attack. Um, so as I said before, the Russian player has a lot of more option that is where and when publish an attack. And from that, we can create, as I said before, a game. Um, we call it the Bitcoin game. In these Bitcoin games, we have two players. We make this simplification of two players because we can think about doing more players, but we want to put in the worst case scenario when the rational players are coordinating and the other, they're playing the same strategy, so it's not important what they're doing. We are thinking about rational players and they're coordinating. And we have some states of the game, that is the number of block, blocks published at every level. And we'll explain in a minute what does it mean. And the utility is the number, the Bitcoins that they own. So if I'm uh, making a, an attack and I'm double spending the money, I'm, I'm, gaining, I'm losing some money in, in attack, but I'm gaining some in, the, in, double, in double spending. Um, so this is how, how it's modeled. The difficult part of this model is uh, to, um, to, to find all the possible states because technically it's infinite because we can create, we can add the block to any possible, uh, to a, a, any possible level and we create how many um, fork, I was explaining what this means, uh, how many deviation we want. So the key concept uh, I was saying before is the one of uh, fork. Uh, so at this block we have, uh, let's say for instance, I'm, I'm uh, uh, the rational player in the red one in this case, and I have 40% of chance of winning the lottery. So I have 30% chance, chance to add the block, while this, the other 6%, uh, uh, they have, the other have 60%. So let's say I, I find it before the others, this, this block, and instead of publishing, I wait that the others find it and, and broadcast it to the other, to the network. So when they do, they do so, we have two blocks. Uh, so the, the rule is that everyone, uh, rule is that everyone uh, should follow the main chain. But if we have two blocks published at the same time, uh, what happens? In theory, the protocol asks everyone to split in a, in a, in a really random way. So uh, when we have great number, they split equally in, in two parts. So uh, we have the, the blue, the blue ones, they are giving 30% each to, to, every, to, every, uh, to every block and are mining from that block. While me, that I'm, I'm uh, I'm the rational players, I would like to insist on my block. So I'm, I'm trying to mine um, uh, on, on, on the red one, that is the one I created. Um, why this is very effective is this attack, because this, this is the addition to wait and publishing as soon as the other are publishing, because I, I, I am a minority because I only 40%, but with this attack, I get 40%, the other 30%, so I get in advantage. And uh, it's, it's uh, more likely that it's me than, rather than the others to, to find the uh, to find uh, the, the block the block. So this is one one block. But imagine that I'm very lucky. I find two blocks and I publish them as soon as uh, the, 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 the 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 good guys I mean, the altruistic players are finding the blocks. What happens is that the others have to split in, uh, in three blocks. So it's uh, I get a very strong advantage. So the strategy is to there is an optimal strategy and we'll find it is to imagine where, where to mine, where mine, where mining. And the idea is that of course we have to get six, uh, six blocks, seven actually, seven, seven blocks in a row in order to uh, revert an attack. But also I want doing attack, I want to make them slower. So I have to make a trade off between making, uh, making the others slower or going forward on my way. 
and um, uh, of course, still we have an, an infinite, infinite space because you have to make a decision for every single level. But uh, since it's, uh, this is uh, stochastic, we can say that, let's say that this is the case. We have for every 0, 1, 2 is the number of the level. And from every level, we have a value xk, so x0, x1, x2, that is the number of blocks I mined, not, not published, but at least I, I mined. Um, uh, this is my strategy. Maybe it happens that the other find a block and publish it on the, on the main chain. If they do so, my uh, I can uh, give a value, but instead of uh, I just switch, sorry, I just uh, um, shift uh, the, the the number of the the, the zero the, the zero block to to the next one, and uh, the probability to get to the end or the number of blocks I have to use to the end is the same because it's it's uh, it's quite symmetric. Of course, in this case, the attention is not on the let's if you go again, on this block, but on, on the second block. But we imagine that we are making transaction on every block, so that uh, still we want to revert any possible block in which are making we are making transactions. So uh, these are the states. So we have let's let's go to the formalization. Every state has uh, a value that is um, a value from uh, from zero to BB's number of blocks that. Uh, are needed to in order in the best practice to confirm a transaction, and uh, um, this, we, there are two two scenarios. One is that uh, I'm I'm finding a block before others, and uh, I'm adding I have a, a B different B, B, B plus one. Okay, let's say B actually uh, B, stra um, B strategies to uh, where, where to add the block, so I can mine. Uh, something in advance so that when they get to to my to my level, I, I've already more than one block published, or I can start from 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 the next one. So I, I can choose whenever I have different strategies. While the other, they will sure um, uh, will sure publish the, their on their own level. So what is we are going to from the state that we see before to the shift. So the last one, of course, will be zero because I, I never mind uh, after will be, and we are making a shift. And the probability to do so depends on uh, this is x zero. Uh, this no work. Um, x zero is the number of uh, blocks that are, that are already published. Um, a key point that I missed. No spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. The key point is that the one you see in red but not full red are not published because if you publish them, everyone goes on the on the main chain. So we are uh, we do want we, we keep them. Uh, we as as, as a rational players we, uh, we keep them. Uh, so that when they get to our our point, we can publish that, but we don't publish at this point because otherwise, we, we get the main chain. Everyone is, is putting the effort on, on on this block. I remember that the, the goal is to create seven rows secretly and then publish all the time in order to invalidate another block. Um, so okay, we want to find the optimal. We have different strategies. So for every state S, we have k possible uh, uh, levels where to publish a block. And uh, the final state, of course, is when we published one at uh, actually xb x, 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 b plus one, so when we can publish a block at the end. Um, we give a value to every state, so we, to understand which is the best state when we can get. And uh, with this value is uh, n, uh, this is the number of blocks that we need in order to uh, the average number of blocks from that state that we need to, to get to the to the final state. Um, so formally, the definition is that from the average number of block from state S is uh, is an, an uh, weighting average of uh, probability to get into the, the, the S minus, that is the state in which the other are are shifting uh, our our levels, or the the lowest of the values that uh, um, uh, lowest of the value uh, of uh, uh, of the next one of the next. Uh, um, uh, sorry, of the next state. So we want to get to the, the faster to, to, to the end. And of course, the final state has value zero because uh, we get to the end. Still, we have an infinite number of states because at every level we can create uh, uh, an infinite number of forks, uh, technically. But uh, for uh, in our simulation, we are really considering a, a threshold, a number of the you know, forks that we create in each, each level. And uh, for instance, it's enough to create four because we see that uh, when we go to four, we have uh, the same result. This doesn't change. So we are doing all of this, and we get the value, the number, the number of value of the um, first block. So when we start in the game, when everything is zero, 
and uh, we come up from a value alpha of uh, the percentage of uh, uh, of players of a person of computational power that I have as a rational player, we have the maximum number of block, uh, blocks that we can, uh, the, the average number of blocks that we need in order to, to make um, a deviation. So for instance, let's say that I have 5% uh, of the computational power. The number of blocks that I need in order to revert an attack is 25,000. So it's a lot of blocks. And that at this moment, 25,000 blocks uh, is uh, 150,000 uh, bitcoins. That is a lot. And if I want to revert a block that is almost value 10,000 bitcoins, so I have transaction 10,000 bitcoins, it's not worth it to waste uh, 150,000 bitcoin because it's a, a lot more. So for instance, if I have 5% of, uh, of the value, it's not worth it to me in any way to, to make an attack of this kind. Uh, if I have, of course, the majority, like 90% of the computational power, maybe it is worth it because I need just six, seven blocks on average in order to revert the stack. So it's quite easy. What is the, 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 the point, the threshold point? So if, you, sorry, uh, if you fix, we have M as 10,000 block, uh, Bitcoin, that is the maximum uh, number of transaction in, in the block. And we have the reward that we have now, uh, the threshold is 15%. And the key point is that, of course, we can change um, M and R and we find the proper alpha. So the, if you want to improve, not only Bitcoin, but any proof of work of this kind uh, method, uh, we can tune the value of, for instance, the number of blocks that we need for value, for as, uh, sorry, best practice, uh, or the number of the, the value of a block and find which is the uh, percentage of um, um, rational players that, that you can allow within, uh, with, within the system. Um, and be curiosity, the best strategy is only to create one fork. So <laughs> we do a great, great analysis with only one fork. Apart from if are very, very small, like uh, less than 5%, uh, it may be worth it to create two forks at the beginning in order to slow the others. Uh, so it's, it's optimal rather than creating only one fork. But this is given by the, the, the solution. Um, before going to the next, uh, there's a second protocol that I analyzed. we analyzed. Uh, do you have questions on Bitcoin? So when you say uh, three over twenty, it's a kind of a stretch because it's assuming a homogeneous swap power, which is not the case. Uh, assuming when you say k is less than uh, fifty percent of n, uh, it is in the case where uh, all players have the same power, which is uh, not the case. Uh, all the players are sorry coordinating. Have the same uh, CPU power. Uh, yes, uh, yes, that's correct. So we make an approximation. Uh, because what is very important in Bitcoin is the computational power is not the number of players. So yes, technically is, uh, uh, we assume the same computational power, correct. Uh, otherwise it would be very less meaningful, of course, the, the result. Uh, can you punish those or can you catch those that deviate from, uh, from the protocol? Because uh, I don't know if it's, it's, it's not allowed to do, to, uh, to, co co to be against the protocol, no? Uh, yeah. Continue identify, isn't it a, a dynamic game where you can identify, uh, so you, you, you can get one transaction and then you get caught next time? Uh, like, like uh, again, to understand if someone is doing performing attack, like detecting the attack? No, I, I can, sorry, can you repeat the, the questions? I, <laughs> Like it, I, 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 I have first a question, what does it mean to be uh, Byzantine? Do, do you, is it a zero sum game where what, where we try to be able to make problems to other, or is it, it's a national equilibrium where you try to do the best for you, even if it's uh, not uh, what you're expected to do? Yeah, as for the Byzantine players, uh, uh, the idea, in theory, is that uh, players can play any possible strategy. So we want to get in the worst case scenario, and so we can model it as a zero sum game in which uh, one game that is altruistic play, one, one player is altruistic players, or they're like they're playing the same strategy, so it's easy to detect. And uh, the other players are the Byzantine, so technically they're looking at anything, but we, since we want to get the worst case scenario, we make a, um, uh, we can make a, a zero sum game. So define the utility as the opposite of the one the altruistic player and find the worst case scenario 
So in, in, with this definition, we always get the result of uh, uh, for the Byzantine uh, part, uh, for the threshold Byzantine players. Because for fixing T, we can create a zero sum game. Now, is, is, uh, does everyone know the number of players that there are in the game? Um, it depends on the protocol. Um, like, uh, like in, in Tenor Minof is given, in Bitcoin is not given, but we can, in our model, uh, think about players as having the same computational power. Uh, so it's not important. Uh, we know in Bitcoin the computational power, so we can model uh, with a given number of, uh, of players. And uh, uh, so, yes, yes, everyone knows the value of N. And, uh, of course, if you want to model a simple attack, this is not possible. We'll create a different model, for instance. So this is not useful in simple attack. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, we perform. Well, okay. We perform the analysis for every every post, the, all, all these protocols. But I want to get to the point that was asked before. Like uh, we had the. The transaction, like the hash time lock contract, that was based on Bitcoin, and uh, actually you analyze separately the hash time lock contract, but it depends on Bitcoin, which is, which is in independence of way, like the, the proof of work is uh, like analyze it as a different scheme and a different game, but but it affects the other. So uh, uh, I'll take example cross chain swap, in which we have two different blockchains. So this is an easiest example. We have two, two, two different blockchains. We want to make an exchange uh, from one blockchain to another. So we get two different transactions to different blockchain. The two blockchains are independent, but uh, the result we want, the protocol is belonging to the two blockchains. So in order to analyze this, uh, this game, they're played on two uh, different uh, independent, uh, 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 independent, uh, um, uh, sorry, scheme, independent scheme. Uh, we introduce a new definition within game theory. That, as we know, it doesn't exist in game theory. This is one of composition of games. Um, the definition is quite ugly to see, but uh, the concept is uh, more simple. Um, the idea is that we have two games, A and B. We have the same players. And uh, we every, uh, every game has their own strategies, own utility. And uh, we want the players to play on, on both games. So uh, like an example of chess, I'm a chess player, and I'm playing on two different board. And uh, uh, we, the, utility, the, the strategy of the new player, like as you compose it, is a, a couple of strategies, one from, the, from, the, uh, from, one from game A and one from game B, while the utility is the sum of the two, of the two, of the two games. So of course, if I get, get uh, five from one part, three from the other, my utility is eight. So it re re represents the fact of playing independently two games. And, um, we proved some results from this, this uh, operator. And uh, first, that is close with respect to uh, Nash equilibria. So that if we create an equilibrium on one game and equilibrium on another game, um, playing both, uh, the only possible equilibria are uh, the only one, the, the one and the only one of uh, playing equilibria on the single games. And the other two results that are interesting now in, for us in our model is that uh, the maximum, we want to calculate the maximum number of rational and players. So what we do is that uh, we take the value of rational players, for instance, for a single game, we compute them, and then we may take the minimum. So the idea is quite simple in theory. That is, for instance, I play in a game which allows at most three rational players and another game which allows at most four rational players. So if I play both of game, which is the most, the threshold of, uh, that uh, I can accept of uh, uh, rational players, in this case is the minimum of three or four, that is three. And, uh, um, the same we can do that uh, with uh, uh, with the number of Byzantine players that we, we can accept. Um, the idea is simple, but uh, we, we proved it that this, uh, with our scheme, it, this uh, this property is is, uh, is uh, actually is, is actually working. And uh, why why we why we are defining this game of independent games? Because uh, for instance, cross chain swap, we have two players that want to exchange two assets uh, onto the, belong to two different blockchains. So that is, they want to make a transaction uh, on uh, the, the upper blockchain and on, on, on the lower blockchain. And the protocol is very specific. It says that, okay, you can create a private key R and then you uh, ash it uh, and you can create the, the public key that is H. And uh, you publish two uh, 
uh, to in order in a specific order you publish the two uh, um, transaction uh, with with the public key h and uh, as soon as the two are, are published uh, one can uh, the one who created the, the, the this, this swap can um, can uh, reveal the private key and so activate one of the contracts and the other the other one is doing the same so this is the, the, the protocol and uh, since the two blockchains are independent, they don't they don't uh, talk, talk one, uh, one to another. They don't have any relationship. We can take the part of the protocol that belongs to one blockchain and taking making a game, and the part of uh, the, 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 the 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 steps of uh, the second blockchain on a different game. And so we have two different games that we define, and it's a game tree. So it's very I say ugly to to, to write down, but imagine it's, it's a game tree. And uh, with, with, with single values, um, I'll be brief if you want, then we can discuss it. And uh, what we do is, since we have, why well, we do so? Because this game are more simple than the longer, the longer, uh, the full protocol. We analyze them and we prove that they are uh, optimally resilient, that these are resilient for any K and immune, weak immune to any T. And uh, since we analyze them separately and we prove the results, uh, thanks to the theorem, we prove the composition of games, we get that uh, the final. Um, uh, the, 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 the full protocol that belongs to the, the, okay, that takes into account the two games is still optimal resilient and weak immune. So we did we can do that with the cross chain swap. We can do that from any other. Uh, I'll show you before. For for example, Lightning Network is based on Bitcoin. So we prove the result from Lightning Network. Uh, we but we we take some hypothesis from the Bitcoin, uh, from the from the Bitcoin uh, uh, Bitcoin game. We take these hypotheses and we put them together and uh, analyze them separately, and then we get the final result that is the maximum number of uh, players that we can uh, the, the, uh, that we can take into, into account with either rational or Byzantine. <clears throat> I'll go brief to the final, then I'll leave you to the questions. Uh, a bit of sum up. Uh, so the, 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 the key point is that uh, uh, that is to create a model which is into the, if you want to deploy blockchain in some aspect, we want to give some indices that are clear of the risks. So in this case, we take into account Byzantine rational players. We want to give a threshold and then we'll be to another one to, to estimate which is the probability of getting to this threshold of Russian and Byzantine players. Rather than listing a, a, a tax, this is useful because you have to prepare the model, but uh, like in this way, you get uh, some, some threshold. And we prove that this, this approach can be uh, can be uh, um, adapted to any possible uh, protocol uh, that won't be analyzed. Um, and this is uh, uh, done also thanks to the modular uh, scheme that we did. So we analyze, we find the most independent uh, uh, game, uh, uh, we analyze it, and then we put them all the independent games and, and define a value for, for the full protocol. The next step of this, of course, we analyze some blockchain structures, but we want to analyze other blockchain structures and uh, um, another improvement that can be made that we saw before with Bitcoin that uh, we take into account all, even the lowest probability of an attack for the Byzantine part. Maybe uh, we're interested to define a new uh, property of immunity that takes into account probability. So that takes into account the fact that, uh, um, okay, we can accept a, a very small probability that, uh, uh, that we have an, at an attack and we define it with a, a new uh, probability with a new uh, threshold that is not the number of, there's also a number of Byzantine players, but also the, the probability that we can accept. Um, uh, that's, that's it. Um, do you have any questions on the main parts? Can the model take into account the fact that the difficulty or the, the so the cost the, the, the difficulty for resolving the problem is taken to be a function of the number of uh, players because in in um, blockchain if you have more players and you give problems which are more hard or more complex to solve and then you use more energy um like a like the flexibility and number of players you can't take into account. Like you have to uh, either create a model in which we have uh, a number of players and then we, we see how many are, are acting, but it's not flexible in number of players. So this is an improvement that should 
can and should be made from this model. Uh, so it doesn't take into account this model. It's useful for some cases, but uh, actually can take into account every possible model. Yep. We have a question. Can I touch you? Yeah, yeah. Conversation. Uh, what role is you use? Is the analysis available? Okay. Um, so second, is the analysis available? Yes, it is. Publish a tech report, and maybe I can send you uh, for a follow up. What reward mechanism did you use uh, in the tender mint? Actually, um, we took an, account, an, an analysis in which there are, uh, we, uh, there was already an analysis made on the uh, game theoretical analysis um, uh, with the Bayes and game. So to understand the idea is that within tender mint, we have uh, uh, several round in which uh, um, uh, which players are voting and then are confirming the, the vote, saying the per round round and then vote round. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in, the, um, in this case, we had a, a game was by Yezen to see when it was convenient or not to analyze every single uh, every single vote or not. And uh, but we, we were very very um, we actually don't have a word mechanism. But we we just saying okay, we have a, a number of uh, players that are debating uh, and. Uh, we want to see how uh, how they can initiate they can uh, initiate the vote the vote uh, round so that to make something that is not uh, not voted by the majority not voted uh, um, not the majority not uh, that valid when it should be not uh, so in this case in the tournament protocol says that we need two two thirds of the players to uh, the organizer two thirds of the players to uh, uh, validate uh, a block and of course if you have uh, less if you have a third uh, less than a third more, more than a third of uh, deviating parties uh, it's easy to, to you you can create any possible deviation because you don't get the, the two third majority uh, this was an we've made on tender mint but anyway i can, uh, can follow up with uh, with uh, the analysis that we made was your questions? I've got a question. When you're computing the probability to win a fork, you use the formula alpha i to the power of six. Uh, alpha? Which is alpha i to the power of six. Um, uh, it's a lower bound. Uh, I don't know which size it was. Uh, the number, we compute uh, this one, the value of every state. I remember showing. Alpha i to the power of six, I don't remember why it was. Yeah, it's good for it. Yeah. So, it is, yeah. yeah. So, let's say I want to, I'm, I'm the one playing the lottery, 10% of win the lottery. If I win six times in a row, the, the probability, uh, the, the, the lottery, I can create a deviation and win. Yeah, uh, and just, so it's a little bit because you have to win to be ahead of the main branch every time. Yep. Uh, but Maybe I'm wrong, but yep. uh, because it's all Poisson, uh, exponential there, it should be easy to compute the probability to win in the end. So my question was just uh, how tight is this bound, alpha i to the power of six? Um, uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, compute it actually yeah. because- you just wanted something positive. Something positive, yeah. Okay, okay. Actually, I, didn't, I didn't compute it, yeah. If you want to make an actual probability, actually you have to compute, uh, which is a true probability. I think it's greater than, uh, of course it's greater than, uh, uh, I have, you have a slow start and then no, but maybe I can I can win five times, then you you the, the majority win five times, and then I get two like there are main combination. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I was lazy not to compute it because <laughs> it was you know, not useful for the for the. No, no, no. I didn't get that. You just did something positive. So yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I could, we could put the um, more than zero, but I gave a. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, did you need, did you understand the questions or the question? Is there why we put this threshold alpha alpha uh, to the six? And the reason is that we is one possibility to to make a division as a Byzantine player, and uh, but it's not like the only possibility. So it's at least a probability. Um, so if you don't have any questions, I can uh, we can. Uh, 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 well, I'll give you the, the, the contacts and run. So if you have a question, you can analyze them separately and uh, we can discuss it privately. And uh, 
thank you very much for, like, for, for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, I will stop the video now.